Hi everyone, my name is Babur. I am a developer advocate. In this today's video, we elaborate on the top most common usage of API gateway, such as Apache API 6, in architecting API led connectivity. We understand different solutions where you can make use of API gateway capabilities to design reliable, high performance, and simple APIs for other developers. Here is a summary of 10 patterns that use API Gateway, but not at all. And before we go into the, each of these patterns, let's understand the three terms, API Gateway, API-led architecture, and API-led connectivity. API Gateway is a pattern formed by adding a layer between the client and the server that acts a single entry point forwarding requests from the client to the server. It allows all client access to service they want to access with a single API Gateway layer. API-led architectural approach that puts APIs as a heart of communications between the and the applications and business capabilities they need to access in order to consistently deliver seamless functionality across all these digital channels. What about the API-led connectivity? It refers to the technique of using reusable and well-designed APIs that like to link the data and applications, which in turn is based on the API-led architecture. So now we have some idea of these three terms. Let's describe in the second next sections each usage of API gateway to address common requirements and challenges that arise when we designing or adopting API-led architectures. First, in our, our list, API resource routing. In this uh, API resource routing method, which uses the API gateway that, that routes the incoming calls based on the unique resource identifier, let's call it URIs. Implementing an API gateway as a single entry point to all service means that API consumers only have to be aware of one URL domain. In this way, it becomes API gateway's responsibility to route the traffic to the corresponding service endpoints and also enforce any implied policies that's depicted in the below diagram, as you can see. Uh, it definitely reduces the complexity on the API consumer side because the client applications do not need to consume the functionality from multiple HTTP endpoints. In case there are many services in the system, also, let's say, no need to implement all cross-cutting cross concerns such as authentication, authorization, throttling, rate limiting uh, separately for each of these services. Most API gateways like Apache API 6 has already these core features. Second one, API content-based routing. It is a mechanism also used an API gateway to route calls based on the content of requests, for example, based on HTTP header or maybe message body instead of just the URI. Take a, take a scenario when database uh, shading is applied in order to distribute the load across the uh, different multiple database instances. This technique is typically applied when the, or the overall number of records storage uh, is very huge and single instance uh, struggles to manage the whole load. Instead, the records are spread across the multiple database instances. Then you implement the multiple services, one pair unique data store to add, and then you adopt the API gateway as only uh, the entry point to all services. You could then configure the API gateway to route calls to the corresponding service based on a key obtained from the HTTP header or the payload. In the above diagram, as you can see, API gateway is exposing single slash customer resource for multiple customer services and each with a different data store. Number three, API geo routing. API Geo routing solution routes API calls to the nearest API gateway based on where they originated in order to prevent the latency issues and other unforeseen issues that may occur due to distance, for example, a consuming application from Asia calling an API called in North America. API gateways and other service infrastructure have been deployed in multiple regions across the world as needed. For example, using different subdomains, 
for each API gateway in each region and letting the consuming application determine the nearest gateway based on the application logic. Then API gateway provides uh, internal load balancing to make sure that all incoming requests are distributed across the available instances of a given service. As you can see in the diagram, it uses DNS and traffic management service and API gateway to resolve each subdomain against the region's load balancer and then it, it passes the client request further down to the closest API gateway. Number four, API aggregators. This technique performs operations, for example, queries against multiple services and returns the result to the client service with a single HTTP request or response call. Instead of having the client application make several calls to multiple APIs, an API aggregator uses API gateway to do this on behalf of the customer on the server side. For example, consider mobile application that makes multiple calls to different APIs to show the data for a single screen. In this case, it increases the complexity in the client code and over utilization of our network resources, right? And even poor user experience as application is more exposed to the latency issues. API Gateway can accept uh, as input all the information required and does the request authentication and validation, understands all the data structures from all APIs that it interacts with internally and is capable of also transforming the response payloads so that, uh, they can be sent back to this mobile application as a uniform format, as a, in one payload needed for the customer. Number five, it is API centralized authentication. In this design, API Gateway acts as a centralized authentication gateway. As a, an authenticator, API Gateway looks for access credentials in the HTTP header, for example, a bureau token or implements the business logic that validates those credentials with an IDP, identity provider, such as we have Okta, Cognitor, Azure Active Directory, or Ori Hydra. Typically using this OpenID Connect plugin yes, is an authentication protocol based on this OS2 and checking whether they have access to this API or not. Centralized authentication with API Gateway can solve many problems, have some benefit as it completely offloads the user management from application and it improves the performance by responding quickly as much as possible to authentication requests received from the client applications. For example, Apache API 6 offers a variety of plugins to enable different methods of API Gateway authentication. Number six, API format conversion. This refers to having the ability to convert payloads from one format to another over the same transport. For example, from XML or SOAP over HTTPS to JSON over the same transport. Uh, like, let's say, or vice versa. API Gateway by default offers capability, uh, uh, capabilities in support of REST API and some uh, specialized API Gateway support. In addition to payload conversions, transport conversions such as converting from uh, message queue, telemetry transport, MPQTT over TCP, uh, very uh, popular in uh, transport uh, in uh, Internet of Things, right? Or it can convert this MQTT to the regular JSON or over HTTPS. For example, Apache API 6 is able to receive HTTP request, then it transcodes this request, forwards it to the gRPC service. And, uh, and when it comes back, it gets a response from the gRPC service and returns to back to the client in, this, in the same format that received in the request, like in HTTP. By means of it is gRPC transcode plugin. Number seven, API observability. By now, we know that API Gateway offers a central control point for incoming traffic to the variety of destinations, but it can also be the central point for observation as well, since it's uniquely qualified to know about all the traffic moving between the clients and our service networks, right? There is always the possibility to instrument the API Gateway so observability data like structured logs metrics and traces can be collected in order to uh, use specialized monitoring tools 
let's say uh, API 6 provides pre-built connectors uh, or plugins that you can easily integrate with the external monitoring tools such as Prometheus, Skywalking and many others. You can leverage these connectors to ingest the log data from your API gateway to further drive useful metrics and gain a complete visibility into the usage. You can manage the performance and security by continuously monitoring uh, your logs in the API gateway. Number eight, API caching. API caching is yet another level of caching that's usually implemented inside API Gateway. It can reduce the number of calls made to your endpoint and also improve the latency of your request to your API by caching a response from upstream. If the API Gateway cache has a fresh copy of the request the resource, it uses that copy to satisfy the request directly or instead of making the request to the endpoint once again. If the caching data is not found, a request travels to the internal upstream and to the backend services. And in that time, the API Gateway caching will just record this data. Number nine, API fault handling. API services fails due to any number of reasons, such as network issues, connection, uh, let's say failure to open the connection to data stores like SQL Server database, or it can, it can be API performance issues, or maybe failure to authenticate uh, uh, to the dependencies. In such scenarios, our API services should be resilient enough, right, to deal with uh, uh, unpredictable failures. Also, we want to be sure that many resiliency mechanisms we have in place, such as error handling or circuit breaker, health checks, retry, fallback, or making redundant instances and so on, uh, we, modern API gateways support all these above uh, error handling features, including automatic retries and timeouts. API Gateway in this scenario uh, acts as an orchestrator that can use this status report to decide how to manage the traffic or load balance to the healthy node or fail fast to the due to maybe some cascading failures or sim simply alerts you when it notices something goes wrong uh, with your API Gateway. And API Gateway also ensures that routing and other network uh, level components work together successfully. Number 10, this is a, a last one in our list, API versioning. This refers to having the ability to define and run multiple concurrent versions of a single API. This is a particularly important, right? As APIs will evolve over time and having the ability to manage concurrent versions at the same time will enable API consumers to incrementally switch to newer versions of an API. So older versions can be deprecated or ultimately retired by time. It's important that as an API, just like any other software application, should be able to evolve either in support of new features or maybe simply just in response to the bug fixes. You can use API Gateway to implement API versioning. It can be in the header, based versioning, or query parameter, or pass based. Throughout the video, we described the, some of the use cases of API Gateway in designing API-led architecture, like how API handles authentication, transformation, aggregation, and caching, observability, and how the API Gateway can be applied in order to route access to the multiple backend endpoints and so on. However, there are many other use cases you one might think of. You can check out our the website, Apache website, and learn more about use cases.